How do you all view delicious people? I'm here today to view my boyfriend's back. So, this of course is a um, movie that is to be a zombie film, but doesn't focus on the zombie part. We don't have Johnny that goes on and infects other people and they become zombies. No, we just kind of focus on like this romantic tale about Johnny who has always ever wanted to get with Missy and figure out a way to do so. And when it seems that all of a sudden he is to find his way not into Missy's heart, but to have a bullet be put into his, Johnny then is to realize that he may never go on and get the opportunity for him to take Missy to the prom as he asked her before he was to die. Weirdly enough, Johnny does get a second chance after all by climbing out of his own grave. And as Johnny is to rediscover his life, as well as rediscovering how long he is to relive, <laughs> Johnny has to forcefully make some choices. People are to be afraid of Johnny because they are to call him the dead boy or are to think that he is some monster that needs to be killed. And we have a guy named Big Chuck who becomes Johnny's main villain here. And Big Chuck is to be bringing in all these like lynch mob like characters to try and take down Johnny, but by the end of this film, we have a number of people that are starting to come to a realization that Johnny wants to do one last thing and then possibly run out the time of which that he is to relive, so to speak. Um, meaning that he has gone on and died and then come back to life to get his one last moment. To then go into the gates of heaven to find out what the whole judgment uh, that Johnny is going to be facing next. So, with that said... Like that kind of in a very roundabout way uh, goes on to kind of briefly kind of go through this movie. How do I feel about this film? Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was a great, funny film. Um, and a lot of people would go on and be like, no, I, I don't think that this movie is that good. Or I thought it was too goofy or whatever. Uh, no, I thought it was great. I thought it was just, there's so many things going on. We have Dr. Uh, Bronson here, who is to see a dead man at his doorstep. And so Bronson is going on and checking this guy and is realizing, yeah, you're dead. <laughs> and so Bronson is to want to, of course, Johnny's skin here. To see if he can figure out how to reverse this process. And it seems in the process, Bronson is to come to some other realization. And so... Which that too we play around with. So... Uh, so yeah, so with that said, it's a fun movie. I just, oh my god, it was so funny. Um, I chuckled throughout this movie. Um, really, where can you go to see this film? Because it's one of those where it's like, hey, rent or buy or justify seeing it somewhere. If you can rent it, go ahead. Uh, but I'm also going to help you out by listing an app where this movie is available. So... I have gone on for quite a bit of time and used an app uh, recently called Vidlessy. V I D L E S Y. Vidlessy. And 
I went on onto this app and started just kind of watching a number of films. I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. Uh, I can now finally see a number of things for absolutely free. And so I was like, heck yeah, I can finally watch all these things. Like, yeah, you would probably have to go on and... Like, if you watch more than one movie, it'll ask you to, like, share the app. You can just kind of immediately click into something and then click out of it and just, like, continue to, uh, whoops, uh, continue to go on and, and just do the, uh, the app anyways. Uh, so you can just kind of pretend that you're going to share something and then you don't. And then you can watch the movie. So... Yeah, so go on and Vidlisty and check this out. And also, if you want to just go on and rent this, because you have money available regardless, then do that as well. Might as well. Uh, if you have the quiche. So, with that said, let's get into that double five. Let's go into spoilers. Let's go into that time yet again, because it's spoiler time. Spoiler time, it's about the time you spoil this movie. So, in the very beginning, we have this comic book strip letting us know that Johnny was to always be forever infatuated with a girl named Missy. And to the point where he was at Missy's birthday party one year and was to have this very special gift that he wanted to go on and give to Missy. He was like, yeah, I have the perfect gift, uh, or the perfect gift compared to everyone else. And so I'm going to win Missy's heart. So, Johnny gets to the time where he needs to go on and give Missy this gift. And the parents are looking on at Johnny. And they're like, well, like, son, like, uh, like, are you prepared? So, all of a sudden, Johnny is to look at the people and look at Missy. And he runs off and chickens out. That was the one opportunity that he was to have gotten, and it just didn't work out. But, wouldn't you know it, Missy, later on, throughout the years, had become more and more attractive, and Johnny was always swooning over her. So, Missy, at one point, was to have a boyfriend who was named Buck, and Missy finally had gone on to slap Buck in the face, and have their relationship be over. And so Johnny is now thinking that there is a chance here. Oh my god, there's an opportunity. So Johnny, of course, wakes up uh, for his day, goes off to school, and is to grab a donut for breakfast. And so Johnny then goes on to his class. And we all of a sudden have Missy, who is bizarrely just falling head over heels for Johnny. And is, like, uh, like kissing him and doing all these things. And Johnny's like, oh, I must be dreaming now. Coming to find out... Johnny is in this whole auditorium or this whole room, this whole gymnasium, this whole gym class, and he is in bed with Missy going on to do the, uh, the deed of sorts. And so all of a sudden everybody's rooting for Johnny. They have these massive signs. Go do it, Johnny. Yeah, it's all you. Yeah. <laughs> We have Eddie, Johnny's best friend, who's rooting him on. So, Johnny starts to get in the motion of things. And all of a sudden, there ends up getting this random referee who throws this flag. And is to say that... Johnny is uh, only holding regulation size. Really, for meaning that he's holding regulation size for his manhood. That he isn't getting wood. So they have to call a flag on the play. And all of a sudden we have a number of people that come into the fantasy. And they're like, this is the worst fantasy that I've ever been in. And 
we have the sheriff who goes on. He's like, like seriously, Johnny, you couldn't. You like, he's like, you couldn't have gotten it up, <laughs> or some goofy thing like that. So, uh, so Johnny is to come back, uh, into into the real world, uh, where he's still just pining away for Missy. So, come to find out. Uh, Missy and Johnny are to be at these lockers, and all of a sudden we now have Buck with seemingly this marching band with a guy named Chuck Blonsky, or Bronsky, and so we have Buck that is making his way to Missy, and I don't know what the marching band was really for, it didn't really make sense to me, but... Buck goes on and is to ask Missy, it's like, well, hey, Missy, just, like, take me back, like, uh, like, come on, and Missy's like, oh, okay, and all of a sudden, Johnny, who is looking on at both Buck and Missy, and he realizes again that there's another opportunity lost, Chuck all of a sudden is to stop Johnny dead in his tracks, like, what were you looking at? <laughs> And so we have Johnny that, of course, gets desperate at this point to wrangle in his best friend, Eddie, to have him go on to help him try and win over Missy by going to this convenience store and pretend there's a robbery going on. Eddie is to have this squirt gun and he showcases that by kind of pulling on the trigger and water comes out and plus also when the real burglar is to take eddie's gun we start to see like water leaking from the gun and it's funny so johnny is to want to ask like eddie hey what are you gonna say and so eddie like like kind of starts out here with what he's all gonna say and johnny's like really that's what you're gonna go with and then he's like yeah like come on like it doesn't really have to be all that in depth and, and so on and so forth so johnny's like oh, all right okay so johnny goes into the convenience store and eddie is continuing to practice being a robber outside the convenience store it makes no sense so Johnny starts going into the convenience store and is to realize Eddie is not coming through the door. So Johnny starts buying up the whole entire store, buying up every single thing, waiting for Eddie to come. So now all of a sudden we have the real burglar, robber, thief, who is to see Eddie. And both of them are wearing the exact same clothes. And so the robber is or the burglar is at a robber let's go with robber is talking to eddie and is telling him hey are you gonna rob this store and he's like yeah I'm, i don't know and so the guy holds him up and is like hey give me your mask and so eddie does so so this robber goes in the convenience store is to hold this up and so johnny turns to missy and tells her like uh like this kind of generic like hey don't worry everything's gonna be okay so as we have missy who is grabbing for this bat and we have eddie that is slowly making his way into this convenience store johnny is to try and talk to this robber and at some point the robber realizes that Missy is going to take some action here. And so the robber wants to go on and shoot Missy. Johnny jumps into the direction where the bullet is heading. He ends up getting hit in the chest, falls over, and is now bleeding from his chest. Missy looks on to... see Johnny now bleeding and Missy is uh, is kind of uh over like right next to Johnny so 
Eddie goes on to smack this robber in the head with this bottle and he falls over. We'll find out later that supposedly there was some snafu going on in this section of the movie, but we'll we'll move on here. So Johnny then finally is to ask Missy if she will go to the prom with him, and Missy's just like, sure. You're dying. There's no real commi commitment here. So, Johnny then dies. They do a whole funeral for him. Uh, we have Missy, who is mourning over Johnny's death, because she, ri or she realizes that Johnny had risked his life for her, and uh, took the bullet for her, and we have a number of people that are all grieving. So, as we have this funeral, we have the parents, and so the mother goes on and is to have made Johnny's special sandwich and tells him that he needs to go on and eat every bit of that sandwich. And uh, we, of course, have Missy, who tosses this rose into this grave, and then everyone walks off. So, we have Murray, the groundskeeper, who, or grave digger, my bad, who then is to fill this hole with mud and dirt and whichever, grass. Anyways, moving on. And so, all of a sudden, within a day or two, Johnny is to crawl out of his own grave. Hopefully he had gone on and seen the Ryan Reynolds movie Buried, or maybe Batman, uh, the Batman scene from Justice League Doom, or Kill Bill, to figure out how to unbury himself. Even though the Ryan Reynolds film Buried, like, yeah, uh, not exactly the happiest ending with that story. But it's good. Uh, so, we have Johnny that makes his way out of the grave, and Murray is not shocked by this. It's like, oh yeah, did you just dig yourself out of your own grave? Johnny's like, yeah, I think I just did. And Murray's like, oh, okay, all right. Well, like, hey, just so you know, just don't leave the graveyard. And Johnny's like, well, why? As he's walking towards the exit. <laughs> and then Murray realizes, well, it's too late. And so... Johnny just walks out of, like, his own grave and graveyard to go on and make his way home. Where he, at first, goes on and surprises his parents, and his father turns to Johnny. It's like, well, like, you know what, I, there was a number of doctors, a coroner, like, ourselves, and everybody that... All assumed you were dead, son. Like, what's going on here? And Johnny's like, well, I'm alive. And they're like, okay, all right, well. Well, uh, how about you just go to bed and get some rest? And so Johnny all of a sudden just goes on and just pretends like it seems everything is normal. And so the next morning, uh... We have Johnny's parents that ask him, like, hey, do you want to eat breakfast? And Johnny's like, mm, I, 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 no, I, don't I don't think so. And so they're like, hey, like, maybe instead of you going to school today, maybe we should give you, like, uh, or have you take, like, a doctor's appointment. Because, like, if you're dead and then you're not, like, you should probably see a doctor for that. And... <laughs> We have Johnny who's like, no, I'm late for school. Like, I'll see you later. And so he leaves for school. So Johnny, of course, is late for school and makes his way into this classroom and everyone is freaking out. As, of course, they went on to have the teacher, who is to say Johnny Dingle's name, and come to find out she realizes, oh, yeah, he's dead. Oh, uh, all right. So... Johnny makes his way into the classroom, and Ding, uh, Dingle is to say to the teacher, Yeah, I'm sorry, 
uh, that uh, I was late for class. And the teacher goes on to tell Johnny, it's like, well, son, even if you're dead, like, you need to make sure that you're on school on time. Like, you get a demerit. And Johnny's like, what? So, Johnny is seeing all of his friends and whatever just kind of looking at, like, Johnny, like, oh, my God, something is wrong here. Eddie's looking at Johnny. He's like, oh, my God, you're still alive. I thought you were dead. So... Now we, of course, have Johnny that is to try and ask Missy. It's like, well, hey, Missy, like, what about the, like, the whole prom thing? Like, I asked you about that whole thing. And Missy's like, yeah, about that. Like, you were dying at the time. And so Johnny's like, well, yeah, but I'm here now. So, like... How about it? And Missy's like, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Um, and Johnny's like, well, is it because I'm dead? Like, is it, is it because I, like, it's because I died? And Missy's like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, like, Johnny's like, okay, like, I can understand where, like, that may go on and uh question things but so we have buck that is to meet up with missy and it seems that missy is to be forced into going to the prom with buck instead as we also have chuck who is telling johnny to get away uh, from Missy or Buck, and he calls him some goofy, like, dead kid or, or dead man or something like that. And so, Johnny then goes off to lunch, and we now have to test the theory of whether Johnny can hold down normal food, because possible zombie here. So, Eddie is to look on as Johnny is to not eat any of his meal or spit it out, saying that all the food now tastes weird. And so Eddie's like, well, hey, I'll eat your food if you won't eat it. And all of a sudden, Johnny is looking at Eddie's hand or H Eddie's arm. And Johnny is to all of a sudden get closer to Eddie's arm like, ah, ha. and Eddie's like, hey, like you just took a bite of my arm. Like you just tried to take a big chunk of my arm. How, how could you have gone and done something like that? I'm your best friend. And Johnny's like, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking. I was just like, <laughs> and so Eddie is to just walk away in fear and paranoia but then at some point eddie it's re me back up with johnny and is to tell him it's like well hey like like i get that it was all a mistake or like it was just a misunderstanding but you you tried to bite my arm <laughs> so johnny's like well yeah but i'm sorry and eddie's like okay like we can we can just forgive that and so, we have Johnny that is to still try to go on and talk to Missy and say to her, it's like, well, hey, like, Missy, like, I get that maybe prom may be out. But, like, how about we just go to a movie together? Like, how about we just hang out together? And Missy's like, sure, like, we can do that. Like, even friends can go on and do that. So, Johnny goes with Missy to, of course, a zombie film. And so, Johnny and Missy go on, and Johnny is giving Missy jujubes and... 
she ends up taking them and then Johnny used to tell her to drink this pop and she does. And Johnny has this weird thing about him saying like, isn't there a party going on in your mouth? <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> so they go to this zombie movie and we have these two guys uh, who of course are looking on. And one of them ends up being Matthew McConaughey. I was like, oh my god, it's Matthew McConaughey. It's also Oliver Tull, but still, Matthew McConaughey. And they're like, hey, isn't that that dead kid? And they're like, yeah, it is that dead kid. And so... We have a moment in this zombie film where... The guy that's it, that's on the movie is to mention that there could be a zombie anywhere and, or even to be here. And so he points at the screen and he points right at the right at Johnny. Johnny's like, huh? <laughs> what is he talking about? So. Johnny and Missy leave for the movie and they're talking and they're critiquing the movie and. Missy and Johnny are saying like, yeah, I think there was kind of a misunderstanding there. It's like, yeah, I think a lot of the undead are misunderstood. <laughs> and so as Missy, I feel, is only with Johnny because he is unlike other boys, even the point of Missy wanting to touch his skin and feel that it feels different than any other man. We have Missy that is to further go into kissing Johnny and there's just something about Johnny being so unique that Missy just needs to be with Johnny. And so at one point Missy is to be playful with Johnny's ear and his ear falls off. And so Missy's like, oh, hey, yeah, mm, this is this is your ear. Like, uh, I'll, I'll check you later. Because the sheriff is now outside and calling for Missy. Hey, Missy, come on in. So, Johnny is freaking out after losing uh, a chunk of his ear. And so, Johnny finally goes on to see Dr. Bronson because he has no heartbeat and... Like, he's he's scared. So, Johnny goes to Dr. Bronson and is to run diagnostics and is to kind of, like, bat him with this little thing where his knee is supposed to jump and uh, going on and, and checking his heart rate and, like, he's also checking his uh, temperature and realizing, yeah, you're dead. <laughs> so, Dr. Bronson's, like way of life has forever changed now that Johnny has walked in here to where he is really just starting to question diagnoses of everything. So we have Johnny that is asking Dr. Bronson. It's like, well, hey, like, since I'm dead, like, what should I do? And Bronson, like, is thinking like, well, about that ear, how about, I, how about we just kind of glue it back on or just kind of use a staple, a stapler? And Johnny's like, no. And so like, well, okay, I'll, I'll just super glue it. So Bronson is telling Johnny that if he doesn't change his way soon, that this character can go on and continue to decay and have every piece of his body, one by one, start falling off of him. So he has to figure out a way to correct that somehow. And there's no way for medical or medical med medicine to do that. So, but Bronson is like, hey, how about you give me some skin samples and, like, we'll figure something out. And so, Bronson is to start to do some experiments to find out that he can take a chicken 
and make it into a chick. There is a weird kind of fountain of youth process that somehow Bronson has figured out by chemicals within Johnny's skin. And so Bronson is possibly thinking there might be a way to have Johnny come back to a normal human being. And so, like, that ends up kind of uh, being an interesting discovery at some point. But then there also is to be this other plan that might actually make Dr. Bronson money off of it. So he's like, hmm, that sounds like a good idea. So... Johnny is to get a referral from Dr. Bronson. Or maybe it's uh, Murray the Gravedigger. Uh, I'm not quite sure which. Because, of course, these people in town are to have found out this story about a man 15 years ago who had somehow come back from the dead. And so this is all to lead Johnny to, of course, a woman called Maggie the Zombie Expert. So, Johnny meets with Maggie, and come to find out, Maggie is to have to forcefully tell Johnny here, besides if he doesn't go on to eat people, that at some point his body will fall uh, to the wayside, because there has been that occurrence before. But... Maggie is telling Johnny that he will need to go on and eat certain body parts to continue to survive. Needing to eat a leg, a liver, a head, any number of things to try and go on and survive for a longer stretch of time. So, Johnny, of course, does not want to go on and do any of that but he is starting to realize that the hunger at some point is going to take him um into like well it's either him or me and it's time to just choose me so we have johnny that is to make his way to school for yet another day where Johnny is talking to Missy and both Buck and Chuck are to find out about it. And so now Chuck is finally wanting to kill this undead kid. And so Chuck is running after Johnny throughout this school and Johnny at first is to have this baseball bat that busts into a bunch of pieces. And then Chuck runs after him and then is to find conveniently this axe on this wall where that really wouldn't make sense to me that that's there, but it's there. And Johnny grabs this axe or, or Chuck grabs this axe and is to have these like weird goofy things that he like calls this kid uh, but you can kind of barely also make it out. Um, so Chuck goes on and is to swing this axe like over his head. And Chuck realizes that he accidentally stabs himself in his own head and falls backwards. Johnny is realizing that Chuck is dead anyways. And Johnny decides to start eating Chuck's stomach. Simply because, like, this guy was trying to kill him, and so, like, this guy was a horrible person anyways, makes sense. So, we then transition to, now the sheriff who is, like, talking to news reports, and, um mentioning that this kid was killed and then eaten and so we should go on and be looking for somebody who's eating people and so 
I think we also have Missy and Eddie who are to find Chuck taking chunks out of Chuck. And so they're like, oh my god, did you just eat him? And Johnny's like, well, yeah, like he was trying to kill me. And they're like, uh... So... Missy doesn't want anything to do with Johnny. And so... Now we go on to have Dr. Bronson, who now has Chuck in his doctor room. And so now... Dr. Bronson is not to jump to any conclusions. And Dr. Bronson is to say that Chuck is very ill. He's very sick. Uh, like, his stomach is missing. There's an axe in his head. But he is just really sick. His temperature is really low. And Big Chuck, who is Chuck's father, is looking at the doctor and is saying, like, like, my son's not sick. He's dead. And Dr. Bronson's like, who's the doctor here? <laughs> and so, uh, I'm like, oh my god, this is funny. Uh, so, we now have, of course, Big Chuck that was to find out that Johnny was closest to Chuck when he died. And so Big Chuck is making the clear consensus that everyone is calling Johnny the dead boy. And so it's like, well, okay, like, uh, like I want vengeance for my son and I'm going to kill Johnny, uh, in any way that I can. So we have Johnny that is to make his way home. And it seems we find out that Johnny's parents had prepared him a meal. A meal of a kid. Come to find out Johnny's mother had just found this kid in some location somewhere. And goes on to offer up Johnny this kid. Johnny's like, no, I don't want this kid. So Johnny tries to hide this kid. And so we have at one point where Chuck is to come with a number of his neighbors to try to get into this home to kill Johnny off here. And they all of a sudden start blasting away into Johnny's chest. And Johnny's like, hey, stop all this. Like, come on, guys. And it gets to where Johnny's mother is to grab her own shotgun and tell, tell everybody to get the heck out of there. And they're like, oh, wow. Like, yeah, like, Mrs. Dingle, all right. So, all of a sudden, we come to find out that this kid is to, of course, be the other son of Big Chuck. And Big Chuck turns to Johnny. It's like, hey, were you going to eat my son? And Johnny's like, no. Like, we were just going to, like, help him find his family. And... Big Chuck's son is saying, like, no, this kid was going to eat me. And so, but yeah, so Big Chuck grabs his son, leaves here. And so now Johnny's having nightmares. He, of course, is to have one nightmare where he is to be uh, in his bed and Missy is to sneak into his room and all of a sudden, Johnny is slowly but surely starting to realize that every piece of his body is starting to fall off of him. At first, it ends up becoming, uh, I think, his nose. Like, his nose just kind of falls off. 
and Missy ends up taking gum and sticking it back onto Johnny's face. And then all of a sudden, it ends up becoming an arm that falls off, and Johnny's arm is now resting on Misty, Misty's, like, hand or arm or something. And then all of a sudden, when Johnny tries to sit up, all of a sudden, his leg falls out. And then after that, his manhood falls out. And that, of course, is when Johnny is to wake up and look that he still has his manhood. And he's like, oh, thank God. So... But the other dream is that Johnny is to meet with Eddie, and Eddie has prepared Johnny this meal, and it's Big Chuck being tied up. And so Big Chuck is telling Johnny, like, yeah, like, you've gone on and eaten all those teenagers. Like, now you need to go on and eat a real man. <laughs> and so... uh. Like, Johnny starts munching on this guy's foot, and, like, Johnny's like, yeah, just ate your foot, and, like, Big Chuck's like, oh, well, that was nothing, like, uh, like, you haven't eaten the calf yet, and so, Johnny continues to consume Big Chuck until the only thing that is left is a skeleton with his actual head still on this chair and still big chuck is still talking smack and now johnny is full and he can't possibly go on and eat anymore and so really like that's the kind of weird goofy dream but then also johnny is to see missy and realize that it's not big chuck anymore now it's missy and missy's like well hey like Johnny, like, like, uh, God, what does she end up saying? She's like, because Johnny tells Missy that he loves her and that Missy's like, well, if you love me, like, will you eat me? Like, why not eat me, Johnny? <laughs> and Johnny's like, well, yeah, that does sound like, <laughs> so... Johnny wakes up realizing that he's going to be tempted to even eat Missy, his lover. Uh, we even have a point where the sheriff and Missy are to go on and have a dinner with Johnny's parents, but we'll get to that. So, Johnny is to finally want to give Missy this gift to prove how much he loves her. And so... Johnny goes to this beauty salon to find Missy wanting to get her hair done. And so Johnny finally gives Missy this birthday gift he was trying to get her years ago. And it was to be this locket, this heart locket, that had both of their pictures in it. And so Johnny is to also tell Missy that he has done everything that he has done for her. He died for her. He came back for her. He went on and ate someone for her to try and stay alive long enough to go to the prom with her. And that's all that he's ever wanted. And Missy's like, oh, my God. Yeah. Mm. Like, so Missy is realizing that she does love Johnny as Johnny loves her. And so... This leads to the sheriff now going on, like, okay, like, I want to have a dinner with this family and, like, talk things out. So, because the sheriff is realizing how much a danger Johnny is to the town and vice versa. So, Johnny and Missy go to Johnny's home where they're eating dinner. And Johnny really isn't eating anything, but Johnny's mother is telling him to go in the fridge Johnny opens up the fridge to see that there is a dead body falling out of it, and he grabs onto it. Johnny asks for his mother, and his mother is to say, Yeah, like, there was, like, there was just dead bodies at the mortuary. I just grabbed one of them, and, like, so, like, if you just wanted a little snack. And we, of course, have Johnny that's like, Oh, my God, like, my parents have dead bodies all over their house. Come to find out while they're eating, 
Johnny's father is to also notice that this dog is dragging in this other dead body. And so uh, the dad has to go on and drag the body back to where it can't be seen. So the sheriff is to tell Johnny that he feels that Johnny needs to go on and leave town because this kid has really just started uh, something here and like it won't stop till someone's dead or already dead. So, and also the sheriff is almost kind of threatening to not want Johnny to go with his daughter to the prom or he'll kill him himself. It's like, well, technically Johnny's already dead. What are you going to do? So, we now have to realize here that we're getting closer and closer to the dance. And so, the sheriff is to want to tell Missy, hey, Buck's here to get you uh, to go to the prom. And so... We have Johnny that is to talk to Eddie as they are both by Missy's house. And Eddie convinces or tries to convince Johnny to like, hey, there's only one solution. Eat Buck. If you eat Buck, you can grab his tux and go to the dance as him and, uh, and Missy's parents will be the wiser. And Johnny's like, no, I can't just go on and eat Buck. Like, that just... No. And so... Instead, Johnny goes into... Missy's window. And is... To try to go on and, like, get her to come out. Like, they'll both sneak out together and they'll go to the prom and everything will work out. But Johnny's starting to get weak. Uh, his muscles are starting to fail him. And so... We... Have at one point where, again, Johnny is tempted to even bite into Missy now. And... Missy realizes that this is, again, another misunderstanding. Let's it go. So... Johnny then goes back to the doctor, hoping that there is real legitimate answers here. And so, Bronson is to tell Johnny, like, hey, all the answers are right here. Like, thank you for coming. So, Johnny then is to be strapped to this table. And come to find out, Bronson had talked to this nurse and mentioned how if they took all of the skin off of Johnny's body, that they could turn around and make a fountain of youth like formula and Bronson will be filthy stinking rich. And so Bronson is to think about that as like, yeah, you're right. And so Bronson is to mention to Johnny that he is going to go on and save him by relieving him of 40 pounds of his body. And Johnny's like, wait a minute, 40 pounds? And, Bron and Bronson's like, well, yeah, maybe like maybe 30. And Johnny's like, maybe 20. <laughs> so all of a sudden we find out that Big Chuck is to have this lynch mob. And they want the dead kid. And they realize that he is here. So... Bronson is to realize that there isn't enough time for anesthetic to start peeling off the skin because these guys are trying to break in. So, <laughs> excuse me. So, Bronson just starts to go to work. And before you know it, we have Missy and Eddie that are hot on uh, the doctor's trail to then find out what he's doing free Johnny and by the time that Bronson is to run off to try to avoid all of these uh, rioters or this lynch mob from breaking down his door and he's trying to like waste time of saying like 
like, oh, can you describe this zombie? Can you describe this boy to me? And Big Chuck just kind of runs off to find out where this kid is. And it seems that both Missy and Eddie are just getting flu shots. And they're like, okay, he's not here. We have to figure out where he is. So... At this point, we have Johnny that is just tried everything and he just does not want to go on and eat another person. So Johnny rushes back to the graveyard hoping that he can just fall back into his grave and everything will just reset. He'll be dead again. And instead, Johnny smacks into what was his... Now, uh dirt hole that is to like or undirted hole or let me let me try to rephrase that the hole that was no wait johnny's grave is to now be re having dirt upon it and so johnny smacks into basically just dirt so now, I, I try to explain that in the best way I could. So, the lunch mom makes it there, the sheriff makes it there, and so finally they're like, well, yeah, like, we gotta kill this kid, and, because he's undead, and so, finally Murray is to tell these people, it's like, you know what, like, you guys don't realize that, like, this kid didn't uh, jump through a number of hoops for Missy, like, uh, Murray ends up asking the sheriff, it's like, well, hey, would you die for your daughter? And the sheriff is like, well, yeah. And Murray's like, well, would you come, like, back from the dead for your daughter? And the sheriff's like, well, I don't know. It's like, would you eat somebody for your daughter? And the sheriff is like, well, of course not. And Murray's like, yeah, like, Johnny did all that, those things. For this woman and like would any of you go on and do any of that and they're like "Ooh, gee golly yeah yeah i guess not <laughs> and that's where all of a sudden everybody is to realize what a mistake they've made even though big chuck is like hey let's kill him and they're like mm, maybe not now <laughs> like you guys are all crazy i hope he eats a lot of you <laughs> so Johnny then turns around and goes to the school and is to do his one dance with Missy and Buck is to go on and dance with his teacher. And then all of a sudden, since Johnny hadn't eaten anyone, he hadn't had a meal or anything, he then dies right on the dance floor and they end up reburying Johnny and the, the movie ends and so on and so forth. Uh, so Johnny goes to heaven to seek judgment. So we have this massive courtroom and so Johnny is now to have been waited on because this guy was supposed to die a number of days ago. And so Johnny's like, wait a minute, I didn't know I was supposed to be here. So the judge is to go on and tell Johnny, well... Here's the thing, for what had happened to you, and how everything had played out, it seems that someone had made a mistake, that there was supposed to be one thing extra that was to happen where the burglar was to smack into a thing of coffee, uh, like coffee, uh, containers. And so, since he did not go on and do that, Johnny, you get a second chance at life to repeat that scenario to get it correct this time around. So now all of a sudden, Johnny is to be sent off to go back to that convenience store to talk to Missy and have this burglar come in. And so Johnny tells Missy, like, it's okay, everything's going to be fine. And so... Johnny again talks to this burglar, and so what ends up happening is, is that Johnny again ends up getting shot for Missy, 
And Eddie goes on and smacks this guy over the head and he falls over the like the the coffee uh, pot things like he's supposed to. And so now all of a sudden Johnny is to die again the proper way. And so Johnny finally confesses to Missy how he's always ever loved her and is to think that he's going to die soon. Come to find out. Missy is to look through Johnny's shirt and realize that the bullet had hit this locket instead of Johnny's chest. So Missy opens this locket and realizes that both of the pictures of her and him were in this locket. And so I guess that is the moment where Missy realizes that Johnny does really love her. And that's where things have shifted and changed and like we have a happy ending possibly by the end of this film so with that said that's the way of which that this movie is to go on and end i'm going to try to go on and get out of here because i know i've been talking for an hour and i think that this movie is an hour and 20 minutes so goodbye everybody goodbye everybody